Hello! In this video, we will be discussing metamorphic rocks. We will talk about what it takes to make a metamorphic rock, where metamorphic rocks form, and look at some example of metamorphic rocks. We will conclude with an edible geology activity. So let's get started. Before we start talking about metamorphic rocks, it is necessary to review plate tectonics as plate tectonics is the main agent responsible in forming metamorphic rocks. The Earth is made up of seven major tectonic plates that are always in motion. You can think of these tectonic plates as the thin layer of ice on top of your soda, the soda being the melted portion of the inside of the Earth and the mantle where the magma lives. Tectonic plates are constantly traveling around on the mantle, even if you can't see or feel them doing so. The plates may converge, forming a convergent margin, diverge, forming a divergent margin, or slide past one another, forming a transform plate boundary. First, we will look at divergent margins. This happens when tectonic plates move away or diverge from one another. When plates move away from one another, the mantle is exposed and magma will spill out onto the surface of the earth as lava, which cools and makes new crust. Next, we will look at convergent margins. Since the earth is a sphere where there are tectonic plates, moving away from one another in one portion of the world, there are plates crashing into one another in another part of the world. When plates of equal density crash into one another, they will buckle or fold, and this is where mountains are built. So, when continental crust crashes into continental crust, or oceanic crust collides with oceanic crust, neither will give, so they just buckle and build mountains upward. However, when plates of different densities collide, the heavier plate will sink or subduct underneath the lighter plate, eventually turning the heavier plate back into magma. Oceanic crust is very dense or heavy, so it will sink underneath the lighter continental crust. As it sinks and the plate is melted, magma chambers are created, which produce volcanic mountain ranges as the buoyant magma tries to reach the surface. Finally, we look at transform plate boundaries. This happens when two plates slide past one another. This is the type of boundary the San Andreas Fault represents. So what are metamorphic rocks? Well, metamorphic rocks are rocks that are formed by the change in form or metamorphism of an existing rock. Changes include compacting the rock into a smaller and denser form or changing the minerals present in the original rock, also known as the protolith. The rock that is changing, or the protolith, can be igneous, sedimentary, or even metamorphic. What causes these changes? Well, Metamorphism happens when the protolith is exposed to heat, pressure, or chemically activated fluids. Chemically activated fluids are fluids with dissolved ions that can supply ions needed to make chemical reactions take place or flush excess ions away. There are five types of metamorphism, regional, contact, hydrothermal, dynamic, and retrograde. We will talk about each of them individually, starting with regional metamorphism. Regional metamorphism applies to large areas like basins or mountain belts where the rocks have been largely changed by pressure. When rocks undergo intense compression due to continent to continent collision and mountain building, metamorphism will take place. As you can imagine, there's lots of pressure and some heat when continents collide and mountains are built. In basins, you can just imagine miles of sediments lying on top of you. That would be lots of pressure. 
when sediments are deposited in a large basin, more sediments accumulate with time. As they accumulate, the bottom of the rock pile is buried and subject to higher temperatures and pressures, causing changes in the rock or regional metamorphism. Contact metamorphism. Contact metamorphism generally happens on a smaller scale than regional metamorphism, and heat is the reason for this metamorphic environment. We are talking lots of heat, like the heat that comes from a body of magma moving through rock. Bodies of magma cause contact metamorphism because, as the name implies, this type of metamorphism happens when magma comes into contact with the protolith. The magma bakes the protolith, causing the rock to change. For example, if there was a body of magma moving through limestone, it would bake it, turning it into marble. If high temperatures were present for a long period of time, the marble would be baked to the point that it would form a scarn. Scarns are bodies of rock that can host some pretty cool minerals and precious metals. When hydrothermal metamorphism takes place, rocks are mainly changed by hot water. The term hydrothermal refers to hot water. Hydrothermal metamorphism is commonly associated with igneous activity, which is in turn associated with divergent and convergent plate boundaries, where magma is present. Fluids from the magma mix with groundwater and react with the rock, changing the composition, depositing a new suite of minerals, which sometimes contain precious metals. Hydrothermal metamorphism can also take place in basins where the sediments are being deeply buried, putting the bottom of the rock pile in a higher temperature and pressure environment, changing the mineral composition in the rock by chemically activated circulating fluids. The fourth kind of metamorphism is dynamic metamorphism. Dynamic metamorphism happens when rocks are faulted and folded or from catastrophic events, such as movements along fault zones that shear the rocks, bolide impacts that crush and heat the rocks, and explosive volcanic eruptions, which would introduce heat from the magma and lots of pressure from the explosion. The final type of metamorphism we will discuss is retrograde metamorphism. Retrograde metamorphism happens, well, in the reverse of normal metamorphism, or when heat and pressure are released. When rocks that have formed deep within the earth are uplifted due to tectonic forces at convergent margins, they are lifted out of high temperature and high pressure environments. As the temperature and pressure decreases, minerals start to change into minerals that are stable at near surface conditions. Also, groundwater and hydrothermal fluids can now flow through the uplifted rocks, which, as we have seen, will change the minerals present in the rocks as well. In the diagram shown on this slide, we can see several colorful polygons with names in them. The names represent metamorphic grades or zones. Each zone is characterized by a certain collection of minerals. The vertical axis shows pressure and the horizontal axis shows temperature. With every change in metamorphic temperature and pressure, there will be a change in the minerals present in the rock. In normal metamorphism, we would start in the lowest pressure and lowest temperature zone, the zeolite zone, and move up to the granulite zone with increasing heat and pressure. The reverse is true for retrograde metamorphism. As a granulite is lifted to the surface, pressure and temperature decrease, causing the minerals to change to more stable forms until it has reached the zeolite zone. This diagram is a good depiction of metamorphic environments. If you look to the right in the crust, you will see some white dashed lines that mark temperatures. 
note that the temperatures increase with depth. Temperatures increase more slowly in the zone of subduction due to the cold oceanic lithosphere being introduced into this area. What can be observed is that regional metamorphism is happening at the subduction zone and in the right hand side of the diagram in the subsiding basin. We can also see igneous intrusions or bodies of magma which would result both in contact and hydrothermal metamorphism around them. Now it's time to talk about the rocks themselves. Metamorphic rocks can be classified into two groups, foliated and non-foliated metamorphic rocks. Foliated metamorphic rocks are rocks where the minerals have been aligned due to heat and pressure, the pressure which was not uniform in all directions. Foliated rocks exhibit distinct layers with distinct mineral compositions. Non-foliated rocks are rocks that do not show distinct layering because the pressure was uniform in all directions, or the protolith consisted of minerals that can't align except in zones of intense deformation where the rock is more like toothpaste. Don't let the hornfells fool you. That is not foliation. It is a baked sedimentary rock whose bedding was preserved even through metamorphism. This diagram shows the transition of a shale to a magmatite. You can see that as the shale experiences metamorphism and increased heat and pressure, it will first turn into a slate, then to a schist, a gneiss, and then finally a magmatite at the highest temperatures and pressures. We're going to look at some other metamorphic products. These images are from a website called the Geology Cafe. It has lots of geologic information and it is totally worth a visit. This slide shows that with increasing metamorphism, a granite will turn into a gneiss. Notice the layering in the gneiss resulting from the layering of the visible black and white crystals in the granite. Here we have a sandstone which with increasing metamorphism will become a quartzite. Note the lack of foliation. This is because quartz grains can't align due to their blocky nature. Here we have a piece of limestone, which will turn into a marble with increasing metamorphism. All structures will be lost as metamorphism increases, including fossils and bedding. Let's review. We have learned that metamorphic rocks are formed by the change of an existing igneous, metamorphic, or even sedimentary rock. There are five different types of metamorphic environments that change the rocks by exposing them to heat, pressure, or chemically activated fluids. Metamorphic rocks can be divided into two groups, foliated and non-foliated metamorphic rocks. The textures and the minerals you see in metamorphic rocks are a direct result from the heat and the pressure the rock was exposed to during metamorphism. Now it's time for some edible geology. It is fairly simple to model the metamorphic process. For this video, we chose activities with materials that you hopefully have on hand. For the activities presented in this video, all that is needed is some fruit snacks, some different colored starbursts, and your students. We will start with the starburst activity. Make sure the starbursts are pretty squishy. If they aren't, you may want to microwave them. Only microwave in five second intervals as they melt pretty quickly. Each starburst will represent a layer of rock. Have the students stack the starburst on top of one another. What kind of rock type is this? That's right, sedimentary.
Now our sedimentary rock pile is going to experience a process that will result in its change or metamorphism. How will we metamorphose our rocks? Well, we are going to use our hands, so it will be mostly pressure, but there will be some heat. What type of metamorphic environment would this represent? If you said regional, you would be correct. Go ahead and have your students squish their sedimentary rock pile. Here are our metamorphic rocks. Now it's time for a snack. This activity can also be done with fruit snacks. Take the fruit snacks and lightly press them together. What kind of rock would this be? Well, you could say a conglomerate because it has fragments of rock that you have cemented together using your hands, or another twist would be that they are igneous. Those fruit snacks were made from a hot substance that cooled to make little gummy crystals. If you pretend they all cooled and stuck together, it would be a similar process to how igneous rocks are formed. I will let you decide which type of protolith you want to use. Next, it's time to metamorphose that rock. Again, using mostly heat and a little pressure. Here are our metamorphic gummy rocks. If you want to look for more activities, to model geologic processes or just metamorphic processes, Google edible geology. For metamorphic specific activities, you may want to look up metamorphic squishy or metamorphic sandwiches. Several activities should show up. That is all we have for this video. I hope you have learned something about metamorphic rocks and had a little snack along the way. Have a great day.